Hey everyone, my name is Alexander, and in this video, we are going to cover the complete timeline of how Wall Street Bets trader Roaring Kitty was able to turn his original $50,000 into a whopping $50 million at his portfolio's peak by purchasing GameStop call options and later on GameStop stock. While many of you watching may know of Roaring Kitty's incredible gain in January 2021, did you know he originally got into his position around September 2019, 16 months before GameStop's short squeeze induced surge? I bet many of you didn't since Roaring Kitty only had less than 2,000 subscribers before January 2021. So to give you the complete story, we will be covering the complete 17 month journey of Roaring Kitty's GameStop portfolio from September 2019 all the way to February 2021, covering 50 Reddit posts he made along the way, which were used to update the forum Wall Street Bets on his position. Our story begins on September 8th, 2019, when Roaring Kitty made his first post on the Wall Street Bets subreddit titled, Hey Burry, Thanks a lot for jacking up my cost basis, which was in reference to Dr. Michael Burry, who you may remember from The Big Short as one of the investors that correctly predicted the collapse of the housing market in 2008 and profited hundreds of millions of dollars for his fund, Scion Asset Management, by shorting the housing market through credit default swaps. By now in 2019, Burry revealed that he had taken a roughly 4% stake in GameStop worth roughly $13 million at the time, stating that he seized an opportunity to profit from GameStop in the near term from stock buyback and in late 2020 with the release of the next generation Xbox and PlayStation gaming console. This news caused a temporary jump in GameStop's activity and this is why Roaring Kitty was complaining in his post that it made GameStop call options more expensive for him to purchase. You see Roaring Kitty also had just gotten into GameStop for many of the same reasons as Burry. Although Roaring Kitty said that he actually got into the stock a little bit before Burry did. In this post, you can see that Roaring Kitty initially spent $54,000 on GameStop calls that expired in January 2021. At the time, GameStop was trading at just $4 per share, so with an $8 strike price on his calls, this means that Roaring Kitty believed that GameStop's stock price would over double over the next 16 months, just for him to break even on his investment. Obviously, a company doubling in value in just 1.5 years is extremely ambitious, but Roaring Kitty firmly believed that GameStop was truly being undervalued and that the economy had not shifted far enough to online gaming sales versus physical to justify GameStop's current stock price. Maybe, just maybe, there would be a catalyst over the next 16 months that would lead other investors to realize this too. Wink, wink. But what I think is most interesting about this first post is some of the comments which were largely critical towards Roaring Kitty, including this user who was adamant on Roaring Kitty selling his position since he had just doubled his money in the post. Although in reality, he had not actually doubled his money because of low liquidity. Roaring Kitty responds by saying that you do not maximize your returns over the long run by selling early what he believed was a great position. And even more critical was this user who said to remind him in 16 months when Roaring Kitty lost all of his money, and yeah, that didn't work out the best. But do you know what else wouldn't work out the best? If you don't hit the big red subscribe button under the video and subscribe right now. Only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed, so if you don't want to miss out on interesting and informative investing content, don't forget to subscribe and enjoy the rest of the video. In early September of 2019, Roaring Kitty's portfolio was worth $113,000, a decrease of $16,000 on the day after GameStop posted a terrible quarter two earnings report. By the end of September, his portfolio was largely unchanged at a value of $117,000. I will also note that there is a large spread between the bid and ask prices for his call option, meaning that there is little volume in the market. And for that reason, during these earlier months, take the value of his portfolio with a bit of a grain of salt because if he wanted to liquidate his position, he would likely have to sell at a lower price than his portfolio value states. By the end of October, his portfolio was unchanged, being worth $117,000. However, by the end of November 2019, Roaring Kitty's portfolio showed an increase to $230,000, double its value the previous month. However, the bid and ask spread was absolutely enormous, meaning that there was no volume to actually sell his portfolio for this price. On December 11th, his portfolio took a hit though after a nightmare quarter three earnings report, being worth now just $83,000, the lowest value since he started posting. However, Roaring Kitty had no plans to sell at this point 
because this was a long-term play. And by the end of 2019, Roaring Kitty's portfolio made it back to $113,000 after a really bumpy start. Additionally, you will notice that he adjusted his positions a little bit by investing an additional $15,000 to purchase 200 contracts of the April 2021 $12 strike price calls. He also sold 500 contracts of his January 2021 calls and converted them to various call contracts ending in 2020. Why did he do this? Well, the call contracts ending in 2020 were cheaper, so he would get a greater return if GameStop made a move to the upside in early to mid-2020. And the April 2021 calls expanded his time horizon in case GameStop didn't make big moves until after January 15th, 2021, which amazingly is what ended up happening. 2020 did not start strong for Roaring Kitty, as probably it didn't for most of us, as his portfolio fell even further down to $56,000 after a poor holiday sales readout on January 14th. Roaring Kitty additionally invested another $15,000 into the April 2021 calls to build his total investment to $85,000. And amazingly enough, the 500 April 2021 call contracts that are worth just $9,500 in this post would later sell for around $13 million in late January 2021. But by the end of January 2020, Roaring Kitty's position would fall even further down to $43,000 and by the end of February would stay roughly the same. However, in February he would end up selling some of the calls that expired in 2020 to purchase 500 more contracts of the April 2021 $12 strike price calls for a total of 1,000 of these contracts. Roaring Kitty didn't post a March update, but on April 14th he made a post titled GameStop YOLO update following the start of the big short squeeze, showing his portfolio had ballooned to $300,000. Now, there's a lot to unpack here. Firstly, GameStop stock was up because it was announced that Michael Burry had acquired even more of the company to grow his position above 5% of total shares. This generated more interest in GameStop and thus more buying, causing the price to increase, at least temporarily. Next, his statement of the big short squeeze was his first mention of the possibility that GameStop could eventually surge from a short squeeze. GameStop was a heavily shorted company, meaning a lot of hedge funds were betting that GameStop's share price would stay low and keep falling until the company eventually went bankrupt. In the process of shorting involves these hedge funds borrowing shares from their broker, selling them at market price, buying back the shares when the price has fallen, and then returning the shares to the broker while profiting the difference. Additionally, these hedge funds must pay interest to the broker until they return the shares. The problem occurs though when the stock price goes up, because now the hedge funds must pay a higher price to rebuy the shares to return to the broker which causes them to lose potentially infinite money depending on how high the shares go. In the case of GameStop, hedge funds had shorted the stock to such an extent that in the case of a quick and massive price movement to the upside, hedge funds would scramble to purchase shares to close out their positions and stop further losses. However, this buying of shares would force the stock even higher and potentially cause a chain reaction of shorts closing out their positions forcing the stock continuously higher, and this cycle could just repeat until all the shorts have covered. This is a short squeeze, and what would later play a major role in GameStop's price surge in January 2021. Additionally, I want to note how Roaring Kitty trimmed his initial investment by around $20,000 after this big gain by selling some of his earlier expiration date call contracts as well as his entire January 2021 call position that he initially started with. And I mention this specifically because of the aftermath of GameStop's surge in January 2021 and the amount of retail investors that were left holding heavy bags after GameStop's stock crashed because they did not take any profits. This is not to say that you need to sell your entire investment or even half of your investment when you're up. It just means that as the position grows, it's important from a risk management perspective to shift some of those gains into safer positions or cash so that your entire portfolio will not implode in case the overweight stock crashes in value. By the end of May 2020, Roaring Kitty's portfolio took a hit back to $150,000 as some of the Burry hype had worn off and he additionally added a few $20 strike price calls during this time, showing that Roaring Kitty was becoming more optimistic that GameStop could surge in the coming months. And through June and July, Roaring Kitty began aggressively increasing his position by growing his initial investment from just $55,000 a few months ago to now $150,000, although his position was now worth just $112,000, meaning he was at a loss. 
The investment was towards purchasing 10,000 shares at GameStop as well as 3,000 contracts of the January 2021 call options at the $10 $15 and $20 strike prices. And in August 2020, Roaring Kitty's thesis finally grew into fruition as his portfolio surged to over $600,000 from being worth just over $100,000 the month before. And over the next several months, it just kept growing and growing and growing, a slight dip and growing until Roaring Kitty's portfolio was worth around $2.3 million. So why was GameStop soaring? Some of the major reasons were that GameStop was recovering from the pandemic, interest in gaming saw a sharp increase in 2020, and the next generation of Xbox and PlayStation was coming up in November. Combine these factors with activist investors joining into the stock, plus the potential for a short squeeze, and there was a lot of interest floating around the stock. And in hindsight, given that the investors on Wall Street Bets subreddit were largely responsible for the January 2021 GameStop surge, it seems likely that Roaring Kitty's post helped to get more retail investors interested in the stock, which may explain part of GameStop's rise by September. And I also want to point out that during late September, Roaring Kitty further took some profits by growing his cash position to $250,000, far exceeding his initial investment. And from October through early January, Roaring Kitty's portfolio grew to and hovered around $3 million, with him further growing his cash position to $1.1 million. Now that brings us to January 11th, 2021, the day that will be remembered as perhaps the day that set GameStop's major upswing off because January 11th was the day that GameStop announced that activist investor and co-founder of the online pet food store Chewy was joining GameStop's board with the goal of better transitioning GameStop into e-commerce. This was the catalyst GameStop needed to get the stock really moving. And on January 11th, GameStop closed just shy of $20 per share, with Roaring Kitty's portfolio worth $3.2 million. By January 13th, GameStop closed at $31.40 per share, growing its portfolio to $5.8 million. On January 14th, GameStop closed at $40 per share, growing its portfolio to $7.4 million. Additionally, Roaring Kitty sold 1,000 contracts of the January 15th $20 strike price calls that were about to expire for $1.5 million to build his total cash position to $2.6 million. By January 22nd, GameStop closed at $48.65 per share, growing his portfolio to $11.2 million. And by January 25th, GameStop skyrocketed to $77 per share, making his portfolio worth $13.8 million. Roaring Kitty sold 200 call contracts during this time to grow his cash positions to $4.8 million. And by January 26th, GameStop closed at $147 per share, growing his portfolio to $23 million. January 27th saw GameStop absolutely skyrocket to $347 per share, shooting Roaring Kitty's portfolio up to $48 million. He additionally sold another 300 call contracts to grow his cash positions to $13.8 million. And after days of GameStop going up and up, it finally had a down day, falling to $193 per share as Robinhood and other trading platforms restricted the purchasing of GameStop, causing his portfolio to fall by $15 million to $33 million total value. However, the next day saw his position recover largely to what it was before. However, in hindsight, the end of January was the peak as the first days of February saw consecutive declines of the stock from $325 per share all the way down to $92 per share by February 3rd, bringing Roaring Key's portfolio from $47 million to $23 million in just a few days. And at the time of recording this video, GameStop has fallen even further to just $64 per share. And, well, that was Roaring Kitty's final post, because as a result of everything, Roaring Kitty is now facing scrutiny by federal and state regulators who are going to look through everything he posts on Reddit and everything he posts on YouTube to see if they can build a case against him in some way. Will they be successful? Who knows. But they will try hard, because in their eyes, someone has to take the blame for what happened to GameStop. And it's a whole lot easier to go after an individual investor with a Reddit account and a YouTube channel than it is to go after a multi-billion dollar hedge fund or financial institutions. But at least Roaring Kitty will have $20 million more to fight back with. Make sure to click the big red subscribe button if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.